So I got it's like some really awesome swag from the Black Widow premiere. Um, first of all, they give us these really cool badges. Oh, I'm so jealous. That's a gasp. Then I got some buttons. <gasps> There's like a pack of, of four yes. in there. I didn't open it because I was like, well, oh, I can hear all open it to see what's in it. Oh my god. It. Wait, let me spotlight you on here. <laughs> Right there. Oh my god. Okay. Unboxing. Okay. Exclusive unboxing. Exclusive unboxing of the Black Widow. Um, oh button. my god. Oh! Those are gorgeous. So we got... Is, that's Yelena, right? Uh, yeah, we got Yelena, we got uh, Natasha, it looks like Taskmaster, and then a Black Widow emblem. Yes! Uh, oh, I didn't even see Taskmaster. Oh, like, back... <gasps> I'm so jealous! Uh, I need to get on your publicity distro. That is awesome. Well, I love you so much. Thank you I so much you. for being here today. Of course. of course. It's funny. I was talking to my husband the other day and he's like, I feel like you have this new group of friends. And he was here like, and you hung out with so many of them recently. And he was here like, but you came back from your day, because we spent a day together, with Michelle and your husband, Justin, who I love so much. <laughs> but you see, like, you came back so, like, you had this, like, vibe coming off of you after you hung out with Michelle. And you see, you're like, I could tell that you really like her and see her as a real friend. And I was like, I did! Like, literally, I didn't want to leave your place! <laughs> Oh, well, you could have spent the night. We have a guest room. I know, because you have a beautiful home. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh. So, like, guys, I kikied with Michelle Waffle, who is our guest today, to discuss Black Widow. I went to her place a couple weeks ago, and I met her. I met her dogs. I met her husband. We recorded an episode, which isn't technically your first appearance on this podcast. Uh, it's like, not. It's not <laughs> beca because as everyone knows, I am a crazy type A personality and I film things and store it because I'm, I'm prepared for like the podcast apocalypse to come and there'll be no content. So I'm like, I have 50 episodes ready to go when that happens. We recorded an episode where we discussed Generation X and like the first like huge arc there. And then we had a special guest for you, which was Larry Houston. Uh, I love Larry. And because Larry just launched his first cover with Marvel Comics, he did the Planet Size X-Men cover, which is insane to me. He's never done a cover before. I know. I can't believe it. I mean, and then when I saw it, it actually. <gasps> oh my God. It's so gorgeous. It's funny. I was speaking with the sales team at Marvel and they were like, oh, do you want a cover? And I was like, yes, I do. I want the Larry Houston cover. And they're like, oh shit, it's already feeding out. Because they I, to, to unveil it, you know, on exclusively on the Instagram. But they were like, but there is a version of it, which was like the high res the final one that went to print, which is that one. Because the one they released before was like a low res one. And so I'm happy to say we had somewhat of an exclusive oh. reveal with the Larry Houston cover. And I love that. It stemmed from that episode with you. I knew the cover was coming because Larry mentioned it. He dropped that, dropped that bomb. He dropped that oh. bomb. But mm. that was your first appearance on the podcast. And <laughs> because I love waffles, we're going to do a double serving of waffles this week. Oh. So guys at home, you're listening to our Black Widow review. And we're also going to drop that episode of Generation X and Larry Houston. And he gives, us, he gives us some tea because if you guys ever listened to Generations of X, we had Larry Houston on there. We had the uh, Lee Walds as well. We did have Scott Lobdell and that episode hasn't aired for obvious reasons. We want to be very mm -hmm. sensitive about that. But the one question I asked all three of them was about the Generation X cartoon. And I don't think I asked it pointedly with Larry initially, but we did. You and I went for it. 
And he does give us an answer and some context for the Generation X cartoon that was supposed to happen. So ooh, we can't wait to share that. Oh, me too. I'm excited. But we're here to talk about you and Black Widow because you oh. premiere. I know. Oh my gosh. It was it was so surreal. Like first it was okay. It was really stressful getting down there. I don't go into LA proper that often. Like I just I don't like the congestion. I don't like the traffic. But it was it was Marvel, it was Black Widow, so I'm like, all right. Um, I'm going to do it. And normally my husband will uh, drive me, like we, we drive together, but he had a meeting, a work meeting in El Segundo that he could not get out of. Like it was a high profile presentation and they wouldn't even let him leave early because he's, he was my date to the premiere. So <laughs> I drove myself <laughs> and it was really stressful. Oh my God. But, um, I actually met some of my Marvel Becoming crew beforehand. Uh, we went to get shawarma at the same place that the Avengers filmed their end scene. No! Yeah, when they all got shawarma. Um, oh, shoot. It's it's escaping me. What I think Shalom Grill is what it's called. Okay. I always wondered where they filmed that. And that was like a last minute add-on to the movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, my girl Irene, cosplay counselor, she was, like planned the whole thing. We were going to all get together to eat beforehand anyway. And then she said, hey, I found the actual place if you guys all want to meet up. And so we went there and we I got out of my car and she was like walking up the sidewalk and people were staring at us like, what is happening here? <laughs> <laughs> like LA, especially that area, they should be used to that by now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but and you guys look incredible. I'm sure, I mean, you look way better than some of those like costume, like people <laughs> on the, the, the strip. Um, so I'm not surprised that people are actually looking at you guys and they're like, holy shit. You, you the, the outfit you're wearing right now, if I saw you doing that IRL, I wouldn't even think you're in cosplay. Because you wear it so well, be like, oh shit, like secret ops is here, like <laughs> shit is going down. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that because I only had like less than two weeks notice to put something together for this. Um, I got the invite, I think like two weeks out. Okay. And How did, is it because Marvel knows you? You're like an A-list celebrity <laughs> at Marvel because you've been on their Instagram. No. <laughs> you've been on Marvel Becoming. Are you just like on their publicity distro? And they're like, we need to amp our PR game for this premiere. <laughs> someone please call Michelle Waffle? <laughs> like, oh, why did they I mean, a I'm not. For you? Why did they send I'm... a car for you? <laughs> Oh, I mean, I wish I, I was that important at Marvel. Um, Marvel, if you're listening, you know, you can get at me. I'd love to come work for you doing anything. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. It was just, uh, I just recorded an episode, Loki, episode five recap. And we were talking about Kevin Feige because I just saw an interview with him preparing for our episode. And I made the joke like, yeah, Kevin Feige stops what he's doing just to listen to Power of X-Men when it <laughs> It's like, no, he doesn't. Um, he doesn't. Someone, someone sent me a screenshot of an interview with Kevin on the Black Widow red carpet. And they screenshotted it. And you just see my husband, like, walking by really quickly because he's so late. He's so late getting there. Um, and you just see, like, this blur, this hot, like, yeah. Asian guy, well-dressed. Just Your handsome, yeah. hot, smart, aerospace <laughs> engineer husband walked by Kevin Feige and did yeah. it, like, die why he didn't is, even notice why he, is yeah, Justin like, so cool he well he was he was late because his meeting in El Segundo and then mm -hmm. he had to it took him he said an hour to drive 15 miles to get to the premiere and then it was blocked off so he's calling me and he's like where do I park he's like I see where the tent is but where do I park and I'm like oh my god I don't even know I just pulled into the first parking garage I saw yeah. and I came from the other direction so he uh, he was just a little like frazzled, just trying to get there on time. Because He's like, move out of the way, <laughs> move out of the way, Kevin Feige. <laughs> I'm late. I need to find my wife. I need and to then find we're my all dressed as black widows. So he's like, where are you? <laughs>
I just, that's hysterical. Yes, you were all dressed up as black widows. And it's like, uh, I can't find my wife. <laughs> like, He's like, I'm looking for the blonde one. <laughs> oh my God. They're like, oh yes, Florin Pugh is right this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was really sad she wasn't there. She was at the London premiere. Oh, she wasn't there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Wait, before we get ahead of ourselves. So how did you get, how did you get the invite? Did they just outreach to you? And they were like, hey, we know you're a really... Uh, famous cosplayer. We've seen your work. We would love for you to to come. Um, well, they didn't. They didn't word it like that. I mean, that <laughs> is really nice. Um, I, uh, facts are I, facts. <laughs> facts are facts. <laughs> what did I say that was nice? It was just facts. Uh, well, I think there is some list that I'm on because of Marvel Becoming, and because the rest of my Marvel Becoming crew was there as well. Um, I was previously invited to the X-Men Dark Phoenix premiere. So I think that list. <laughs> Were you like, thank you, I'm busy? <laughs> like, well, I'm busy that night. I went, I went. You went? Um, I didn't know that. I did, yeah. I went to the Dark Phoenix premiere. Uh, it was it was nice. Like, the energy outside the theater, there was tons of stars. I mean, like, everybody came out from all these different x-men and marvel like franchises were there i think i remember i saw olivia holt from cloak and dagger on freeform um i saw sean ashmore from a distance okay Famka Johnson. yeah she she was there i know i was gonna ask did you see the phoenixes colliding i did i did <gasps> oh, was, my oh my god i mean i couldn't get to them because the way they had it set up like all the guests and the cosplayers were in this giant X mm -hmm. and then all the celebrities went around, but the only points you could be near them were at the, X, like the four X points. Okay. So everybody was crowded there and I'm like, I'm not gonna like try I, to get in there. I ran into Famka at Nobu in the financial district. I was having a meeting, a publish. I used to work in book publishing and I was just there having a meeting and I saw this gorgeous woman walk in and literally I'm talking to an author and I'm like, ah, blah, blah. and I go like this <laughs> and guys, we can't see me. I put my hand up to like this wonderful author, like no shade. And I'm like, I'll be right back. And I go up to Famka. I'm like, I love you so much queen. Like my husband <laughs> and I, we are obsessed with you. X2, she turned into Phoenix. And then I had a date with my husband for the first time. And oh looked at me and she was so like you could see her energy in her life and i was like can i take a selfie with you and and oh. we did and oh. it's, i i posted a lot obviously on the power of x-men feed but it's I, I i'm gonna disagree with you i would have clawed my way to the end of those x's i don't <laughs> care how many dark phoenix cosplayers <laughs> are there i would have snatched every wig every sash <laughs> literally oh been like bomb guy yes but with my luck i would have gotten sophie turner who i like sophie turner I like Sophie Turner quite a bit. I thought she did a great job in the show, or excuse me, the movie. But Famka for me is like the star. But wait, wait, yeah. digress, digress. It's okay. It's okay. There was, it was just, it was a lot of fun. Like, I mean, there were even other cosplayers there that are well known. And, um, oh gosh, oh, you know who else I saw and talked to? Um, Jessica Chastain. She was <gasps> so sweet. I have a picture with her. She's <gasps> the only one I got a picture with. But I love Jessica was, Chastain so much. She's so pretty. Like, and she was so nice. Like, she was talking to every single person. Like, she walked down this area that I was standing at with a couple other cosplayers, and she gave everybody the same amount of time. She signed like everything that people asked her to. She had a broken wrist, I think, from uh, another movie. I think she was working on at the time, but she had a cast on. Would and she been... did like the X pose with us and everything. Oh my God, you and have to throw that up. Please. I know, I haven't posted it yet. Um, a lot of other people had posted it, so I was kind of just waiting to like do a nice throwback <laughs> pose. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun. And I met and talked to Chris Claremont. He was there too. Oh, he must have loved you. Yeah, he mentioned I was dressed as 90s jean because I, I don't know, I didn't want to wear Dark Phoenix. 
Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, I mean, because you're going to the Dark Phoenix premiere, they got it covered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, there'll be other Dark Phoenixes there. I'll be the 90s version. And he commented on my thigh pads. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't like the costume traditionally, historically. I forgot what kind of, what he calls it something. But I think when I that's how, no. When the way I first got to know you was through your angel cosplay. That's the first time I sort of got to know who you were. And that's when I was just coming into the X-Men Instagram community. But your 90s gene, I'm telling you, 90s gene is my favorite look for the character. If I would have seen your San Diego or IRL, you literally would be screaming. And <laughs> I, I saw this girl a couple of years ago when I was in San Diego, I had adult braces and she was dressed up as uh, 90s jean. And I literally came running up to her and I had like the, 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 the braces and rubber bands. And I went to talk to her and like one of the rubber bands snapped <laughs> and it looked like a crazy fan. I'm like, jean, can I take a photo of you? Like, <laughs> so I would, in an alternate timeline, I would, have done that to you so oh well one of these days you can do it in real life we'll well, go to the same con i can't i mean i love you so much i'm going to reiterate that you have such a great soul you have such great energy i'm not surprised you're going to these premieres and you're on whatever list you are and i do want to quickly just say your marvel becoming episode we talked about it in the generation x episode (laughs) double waffles double waffle waffle double stack Oh, double stack. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you call a stack of waffles. Like, because, you know, with pancakes, it's like a short stack or I don't know what the other stack is, but. I anyway. haven't eaten since 1999 and I am offended that you assume <laughs> that I know about food. Uh, no, I, I I was thinking that too, because I thought I was going to say like double stack or stack, but I don't know how that works and if it's applicable to waffles, but. Yeah. I but don't I, either. I should I should find that out. <laughs> yes. like, I should, yeah. So for the Black Widow premiere, because this I can talk about Dark Phoenix forever. For the Black Widow <laughs> premiere, did you did you get to see Kevin Feige from a distance? Did you get to see Scar- was Scarjo there? Um Scarjo was not there. Um, what? Scarjo. Yeah. We didn't get any movie stars, but we got uh Kevin Feige, we got uh, the director and two of the writers, I believe. Like, they oh, came cool. out before the movie and thanked everybody for coming. Um, but those were... Oh, you know what? I take it back. I did see Rob Liefeld. I said hi to him. Oh. Yeah. Did he say anything <laughs> back to you? Uh, he, he, like, looked up because I just, like, walked by him and I said, hi, Rob. And he looked up at me and i just was like oh you don't know me i just wanted to say hi (laughs) well he does know you because he called out justin in his shatterstar cosplay oh yeah he did he should know you he knows justin he doesn't know me he should know a real celebrity (laughs) when she walks you are marvel royalty (laughs) no no i'm I'm just a fan i'm I'm your fan I, I well, I'm a super fan of you. I'm your GBF slash Christian Frost brother. So I can <laughs> up till the cows come home. Oh, but, thank you. Um, so what else from like the, the the premiere did stand out from you? Like you were actually there, like talking, you know, to other fans, and then you're like sitting down and you're watching the movie in costume, and like la pandemia has put all these like events on like pause. Was this your first time like going back to a big event like this? It was, that was, it was the biggest event I've been to since uh, we kind of came out of lockdown Yeah, and everything opened back up. Um, It was, there was just a lot, there were a lot of people. I was actually surprised at the amount of people that were there. Uh, but I'm vaccinated, so I was I was good, and I brought a mask too, just in case, because I wasn't sure what the like Protocols mask already. mandate was. And um, when I got there, there were a lot of people not wearing masks, and so I'm like, oh, I guess it's yeah, it's so one. like so weird. When we went to go see Black Widow this weekend, my husband brought his mask, and he wore it actually during the theater. Um, 
Because the, the, the Delta variant, it's no joke. I think since your premiere, the Delta variant has become a little bit more of a conversation piece, but it's only with unvaccinated. I'm not saying only with, I am not a doctor. Do not listen to me guys. But I think <laughs> predominantly the worry is with people who are unvaccinated and unvaccinated yes. pockets in the US. That's where we're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of like scare uh, with the Delta yeah. variant. But people are vaccinated. They've come out and say, you're good if you're vaccinated. Yeah. So, um, oh my God, I... I would have loved to have seen you at the premiere, seen it with you, dressed up as Yelena. How is it like being Yelena? Uh, well, I, so like I said, I only had like less than two weeks to put this together. Mm -hmm. And so I was, I was scourging the internet for pictures, like inspiration, thinking like, what can I do? Is there like a casual cosplay? Um, and I didn't, I was going to do Scarlett Johansson's version initially, but then uh, I had lunch with uh, Chandler from X Rays the podcast, and he'd he'd already seen the movie, and I I kind of mentioned that I got invited, and he's like, "You should do Elena. Oh, yeah. Like she is a real like standout in this." And so I said, oh, "Okay, I'm going to see what I can find." And as I was searching the internet, there was just one like promo shot of her in a black suit. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, everyone's going to do the white suit, right? And I, I could not order that in time anyway. So I said, well, I think I can put the white or the black suit together like fairly quickly. And so I got on Amazon. I found this, this black cat suit and it came with this vestie thing. Yeah. So let me already. See okay. Yeah. It's like, um, I don't know. It's kind of like a weird, like bondagey, like vest. It's got this little arm yes. straps and pads. So it looked very like Black Widow esque. Mm -hmm. I think it's called like Assassin or something. Perfect. So, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. I'll get that. Actually, I ordered a bunch of stuff and I sent a bunch of things back because I wasn't sure what I was gonna need. And uh, I got like a holster. I got like a Black Widow keychain and. Like, my husband like soldered off the keychain part to make me like a brooch to put on the belt. Oh my god! <laughs> Why is he perfect? <laughs> He's really good at like engineering stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's why they don't let him leave work early. <laughs> I know, They're like, you're just yeah. really good at engineering stuff. Like, please yeah. stay. <laughs> please stay. Don't go to the Black Widow premiere. I just love the idea of Justin running past Kevin Feige <laughs> looking for you and then like literally discovering, oh shit, everyone's cosplayed as a Black Widow. Like, what the fuck is <laughs> oh my God. That, I think that interview was actually like on Marvel's feed. Maybe it's Marvel's feed or the Black Widow movie. But if like it's towards the end, if you guys see a hot Asian guy in a blue shirt running past Kevin Feige, that's my husband. <laughs> I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for it. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you, you put together Yelena, you look beautiful as Yelena. Like, you. and like the braid is absolutely perfect. Black widows and their braids. I, so I don't have, first of all, I can't braid. Um, <laughs> and then like second, my hair is too short to like do her style. Mm -hmm. So I just got, this is a fake, I'm wearing a fake um, braid headband. Oh my god, but it looks so natural. It did. I bought like three of them, and I'm like, this is the one that matched my hair the best. Yes, yes. all I mean, Amazon. Amazon's like the best. I know. I've become <laughs> such an Amazon person. When I used to work in publishing, Amazon played hardball, and I was like, I can't. You know, with Amazon, I'm never buying anything from them. And let me tell you, for like maybe a good 10 years. I was good. I never ordered off of Amazon, but now that I am just a consumer, <laughs> I'm yeah. like any ill feelings I had about Amazon and their legal team <laughs> who just <laughs> ate me alive as a wayward little publisher. Um, and I wasn't a little publisher. I worked for big publishers, but like they, when they said, we're not going to do this, they really meant it. But, um, I love Amazon and like where I live, I'm in the city. I'm a little outside of the city, but um, everything comes like sometimes same day. It's just, yeah. it's too convenient. Yeah. And the prices are good. And I do always support like local indies and stuff like that when same. I can, 
and Same. and like Amazon Marketplace, I always look for that. Like I just got the Storm. Hang on, I'm looking for it. Like the Storm trade paperback. Mm, um, I saw that. Yes. <laughs> and I, I got it from Amazon, but I made sure it was from a marketplace from a like, like local seller, well, not local yeah. seller, but you know what I mean? Like a, an indie yeah. seller. Yeah. And I like to support like conscientious cosplay too, where if I can buy something secondhand or buy something from like Poshmark or another person that's it where it's gently used and it's not going to the landfill. Yeah. Um, I will, I will do that. It's incredible. No, I have such a great community. Like, I just, I love the Stan community. Like, and I think you're emblematic of that because it's just, there's so much goodwill out there and there's not, like, I grew up on the message boards, you know, that's where I used to interact with people. And even though I met my husband through uh, AOL Keyword Marvel, um, the other message boards I would be a part of on my own as an adult, like, were just so vitriolic and, and so tough. And I always say CBR because I, I was so excited at one point with the X-Books and people were so nasty. I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I, I feel like you were one of the first few people I really did meet and engage with. I was like, oh my God, fans can be really <laughs> great. Like we can, be, we can be like as a fan community united and we can disagree and that's fine, but it doesn't need to turn into like scorch earth conversations about like what color are Jean Grey's eyes. And by the way, my fault too, for driving some points home back in the day. My fault. I take my bad on that. But Jean Grey's eyes are green, not blue. That's all I have to say. I feel like Larry confirmed this for us. Yeah. yeah. He Either did. during our conversation or a previous podcast that you, you put out with Larry on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I asked him about the, <laughs> shockingly, I asked him about Jean Grey's eyes. And, <laughs> but you see, the thing is he gave the right answer, which I knew because Larry, the thing about Larry Houston is he is a brilliant director. And even when I was a little kid and I noticed a shift in the eye color, I was like, oh, that's because it's supposed to be symbolic of her being Jean, being back mm -hmm. to who she was, not Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Larry Houston said. He definitely said it in the episode of Generations of X we had him on. I don't remember if he said it for our episode. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. I don't but either. The conversation I remember hearing it from him on this podcast. Yeah. I just don't remember if it was our <laughs> segment or the previous one. I don't either. But I will know once I start editing it, like I started going through it. So once um once we get to him, I'll I'll know. I forget everything. Like I just like I mean, with everything going on with Hickman and then other medias and the MCU and the there's a lot. I can't. There's keep... a lot going on. Like, I can't. I can't. I can't keep up. I mean, thank God for podcasts and from the ashes because oh, like, I love from the ashes so much. I know that's how I keep up to date on all the books because I'm so far behind on reading. Like, if it wasn't for Calvin, I don't know what I would do. I don't um, think I would know what was going on. <laughs> we may have a, a surprise guest in the form of Calvin in a couple of weeks. I've oh. tried to seduce him to come and Oh my gosh, please, Calvin, if you're listening, you need to come on and you you need to talk about, you know, our goddess Jean Grey, first of all. I mean, um, that is literally the conversation topic. <laughs> yes, please. I second that. I need to I need to hear this episode as well. Like, yes. I'm here for that. But it, speaking of another feisty redhead, because again, it could be Jean Grey nonstop. Oh, I know. Sorry. We, no. we do get off track, but this it's, is about Black Widow. It's about Black Widow because <laughs> here's the thing. I, I didn't know how I felt about Scarlett Johansson prior to mm -hmm. this movie. I liked her, but I'm not like, so a lot of the, I don't want to, like, I hate to talk like this, but like a lot of the straight guys in my life love ScarJo. And the only thing they ever say about her is, oh my God, she's so hot. And that's fine. She's a hot girl. I mean, that's one thing I noticed. And I saw some other people talking about the ass shots at the beginning of the movie, how she was like walking and like, look, Kate Shortland, who's a director, made that call. Superhero bodies. They're beautiful. I, as a gay man sitting in the audience member, as an audience member, I saw that. I was like, yes, queen. She is fucking fit as fuck. And like, I didn't objectify yeah. her, but I was like, she looks strong. You know what I mean? And I turned to my husband. I was like, I can, I believe ScarJo. 
as being like a James Bond action star. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because she just looks the role. But I think her styling in other movies, again, just purely aesthetic as a gay boy, was really ugly. Like I, I hated her, her, her bob that that hair in the first Avengers. I think her hair was kind of like weird, um, and makeup was a little off in her Iron Man two appearance. But I think she looked great as time went on, and she had more. I think ScarJo had more editorial control of her looks. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the character, I always thought ScarJo was very great at delivering the role. I was like, oh, I I get why they're not going to give her or Hawkeye their own movie because they're just like B characters. But after seeing this, I was like, oh my god! And like, here's the weirdest thing too, with the exception of like Ghost World, I still haven't seen the the story of a marriage. Is that what it's called? The one with Adam Driver? I forget. Oh, um, I I think that's what it's called. Something. It's about yeah. a couple, and then they're going yeah. through a divorce. I haven't seen mm -hmm. it yet. I've never seen a movie where ScarJo had to really carry the film by herself. And I left this movie being like, she can not only, she can not only carry a movie, she can carry a franchise. She's, mm -hmm. I haven't even seen Ghost in the Shell. I, I haven't even seen that. I, I really have been so divorced from ScarJo's career. I think she was on her. She was a voice of the AI yeah, in her. Yeah, she was the voice. Mm -hmm. And she was great in that. Um, but she, again, she was just a voice. So I walked out of this thinking wow, like anything I ever thought about ScarJo, A, I was wrong. B, she fucking killed it. Like she yeah. killed it. What are your thoughts? Um, well, I I agree with all of that. I'm, I remember seeing her in, I think it was Iron Man 2 was mm -hmm. her first appearance. And she was like highly, like she was very glam. Yeah. Um, super glam, like with those ringlets. I'm all, I don't know if my hair would look that good if I was out there fighting, you know? Like, what serum is she using? Because that's magic. Yes! Oh, my God, exactly. The, 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 when she went like that, like the pose that Yelena talks about. Mm -hmm. And guys, Such a poser. Guys, j just a heads up, we are going to be doing spoilers. That should be assumed, but just giving the warning right there before you oh, can yeah. just spoiler warning. Yeah. We're going in detail. Oh, I'm sorry. But anyways, repeat the Yelena line. I'm sorry. I cut you off and you said it. Oh, and you said it's so good. Dude. Such a poser. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. When she was in that, I think they were like in some kind of store and she was trying to like figure it out. She's like, what is this? Like what you're on the ground and you're just, you're opposing she's like what is that <laughs> and yet when she ends up doing it later on in the movie it's just and then she's all no 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 um. she's like oh no oh. i thought i, I want to get ahead in the conversation but florence yeah. pew just like i don't know how you would say it in english but oh, she like on me like she she did it she brought it like i am excited for Florence yes. Pugh. And again, I've only seen Midsummer with Florence Pugh. And the one note, I, I haven't even seen Little Women. And I said to my husband, I was like, wow, she can act. Yeah. Like, like her accent was good. Like yeah. the way she delivered lines, like they were they were dry, but they were funny. Like that was just how she how she was. And like her and Red Guardian were the funniest, like best parts of that movie. I just oh love it. Wait, wait, yeah. Scarjo, Scarjo, Scarjo. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, it's my fault. Now, now everyone knows why <laughs> I say this. I have to always make excuses because I've been told maybe you should keep your episodes to a certain count, um, like uh, uh, length-wise. And it's it's because I go on tangents and I encourage other people to do tangents. But I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> It's okay. All right. I will try to keep us on track then okay. as well. I'll yes. Hashtag Yelena Boss. <laughs> um, yeah. Scarlett Johansson. I think like, this movie, she just did like, such a good job. Um, I, I think it was nice to finally like see her backstory. Cause I know they've always alluded to it. Like they've always alluded that she was part of that secret organization of young like girls who are trained from a young age to be spies, to be deadly, um, to be like, but also be graceful and stealthy, you know? Um, yeah, I just, the, like the beginning part, like after 
they start going on the run um, when the girls are pretty much like tossed aside. I thought that was really sad. Like it was Red Guardian was. It was like he. You could tell like he felt something, but he knew like there was nothing he could do to save them. I don't think he knew where they were going. I don't think he thought that they were going to be treated as badly as they were, but he knew that he couldn't help them anymore at that point. Yeah. So the opening shots, you know, where, where the credits were rolling, I was just like, I can't believe they're going there in like a real hard way. And I appreciated that. I mean, it basically was human trafficking. That's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. And obviously later in the movie, you know, the line of we utilize the world's greatest underused resource, women. And they traffic them. They make them part of the Black Widow program. The one thing I loved about ScarJo so much and, and Natasha in this and her backstory, to piggyback off of what you were saying, was the fact that she earned the blood on her ledger like she actually was emotionally and mentally manipulated where let's let's call them like the second generation black widows they yeah. were mind controlled so mm-hmm. you know they they can easily you know if, if you guys haven't seen the movie but you're still tuning in because you want to <laughs> like know about it the black widows it's revealed early on in the movie the black widows are being mind control and a former black widow found a cure for it you know i don't have the details because i saw it in the theater so excuse my poor uh recapping skills here (laughs) but (laughs) but um you know florence Pugh's yelena is the one who gets cured first and then they have to kind of rescue all the black widows who are now being mind controlled but the distinction was there that scarjo you know natasha actually really was not mind control. She really did everything she did because of who she was. And she even, you know, spoiler alert again, the, you know, uh, the child um, who would eventually grow up to be taskmaster. She, uh, she made the choice to kill her, you know, knowing that was going to lead to her dad, who was the person behind the black widow, um, you know, red room. So, It was, I, I I thought Scarlett Johansson delivered. I loved her so much in it. I know. She, fought, like, even towards the end when, like, she's getting, you know, beat up by all the mind-controlled widows. Like, you know, you just, you see her, like, she's struggling. She's trying, but, like, they're just, they're beating her down, like, harder and harder. But she knows that she's got to fight because she's the only one who can like help them. Like they can't help themselves. They literally cannot. And so if she doesn't like persevere through this beating, then they're going to be lost forever. That entire ending. I I'm going to, so I love the movie. I love the movie so much. I just want to put it out there. I thought act three was a little wobbly for me. So before, you know, I get into why I thought it was wobbly. (laughs) I, but I will say I felt so emotional with that Drakov Uh, confrontation because he has a pheromones um, that that prohibit women from these women from attacking him specifically Scarjo. And, you know, he, there's a twist obviously, but when he's pounding on her, she goes, does that make you feel powerful? You know, you're a big, strong guy, you know, beating on a helpless girl, you know, defenseless girl. And I was just Mm -hmm. like, fuck. Yeah. That is, those are the ideas and messages we have to put out there because you know what, if you couldn't even control the situation, like the fucking asshole that you are, she would have pounded your face to the ground. And I just think of so many sexist men I've had to like be around in my entire life. And I always remember thinking like, man, if that girl knew what you were saying about her, you would be shitting bricks because she can kick your ass, but you Mm -hmm. have to do it behind her back or, you know, just say something extremely demeaning because you literally are a despicable human being with absolutely no courage. Courage. Yeah. Yeah. Courage. (laughs) I know watching that, like, it makes you feel like kind of sick in your stomach. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, I knew why she was egging him on. I knew why she was doing it. Like, but if you, if you didn't like catch onto that right away and you're just watching him, like, you know, like beat her face basically. Yeah. Um, 
it was just very like I don't know like a pit in my stomach kind of a thing like oh like I it made me uncomfortable yeah but not necessarily not necessarily in a in a bad way because I think you know we're we're sh- they, they were showing this to to prove a point that you know like it's not it's never like that hopeless like there's there's always something that you can kind of do to get out of that and um i mean that's what uh natasha did yeah. she wanted she she needed that so that she could like break that pheromone like curse or i, I guess if you breathe in the pheromones is that what it I was know. okay you so breathe it is- in so he beat her so bad it, it severed her senses to her her sense of smell no she was able so, to do it right? so she was the one who was like oh yeah so she, she had to, she was like uh, yeah she came back with that line at the very yeah. end she's like you know you're not even like man enough to like finish i, I gotta do it myself or something yeah, like that exactly oh my god yeah. you're right that was and then she just yeah. throws her head on the table and like breaks her nose and then, yeah. like, bounces. And then he realizes like oh my god i'm fucked Yes. Like, yeah. Don't fuck and with ScarJo in her first movie. I'm f- sorry, Dekov. Um yeah. So, like, did here's the thing. I love this movie a lot. ScarJo had said that they wanted to tell a message that was timely about the Me Too movement and stuff like that. This movie originally was going to come out last summer. And when it was filmed, yeah. it was obviously at the height of the Me Too. Should we have gotten this movie perhaps even sooner than when it was originally supposed to come? Because again, like I'm thinking when I'm seeing this, I'm like, Scarlett Johansson can carry this fucking franchise. Why did, you know, Captain Marvel get a movie before her? Why did, you know, The Wasp and Ant-Man the Wasp get a movie before her? Why did Doctor Strange get a movie before her? Why did Ant-Man get a movie before her? She is so good and electric. I just thought we should have gotten this movie around the time Civil War was coming out. I think... I think we appreciate it more. So I think there was there was an overall like timeline that and that they knew that Scar that Scarlett Johansson was gonna die. Yeah. And I think by having this movie come out like you know after her death, I think it made the fans like love and appreciate her even more yeah. because we all knew in our minds like oh my god she made this ultimate sacrifice. Mm-hmm for her for her family and here we see another movie where she's she's still making sacrifices for her her other family that she had before the avengers you know she's making all these these like physical sacrifices like getting beat like you know just trying her best to to save everyone even um even antonia you know like she she felt really bad for what she did and you can tell like when she says like i'm gonna let you out and i know i'm gonna try to save you and i know you're gonna come after me but i want you to know that i'm sorry like and i love that i just you know it was yeah it was just oh oh my god and the way she delivered it like scarlett johansson's acting was just at its peak here i mean girlfriend can act yeah and you know i I agree with everything you just said. And like the movie, the main theme here is about family. And I think specifically the family you kind of make for yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they were just like, it's Yelena was like, the only part of my life that was the realist was the fakest. And it was only three years, but like, you feel like my family. And then you drew parallels with the Avengers and she was here like, Natasha was like, if I can fix this family, if there's hope for this family, I can, I can fix my Avengers family as well. I just thought it was so great. The only, here's the thing. I I don't want (laughs) to, I don't want to disagree with you about her death and end game and how this movie makes us feel about Natasha. I'm just surprised that like, the loom, the thematic looming of her death wasn't present in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like I said goodbye to Natasha in this movie. I felt it was more like, Hey, what's up girl? You know, like, <laughs> what did you do on your, what, what did you do this summer? You know what I mean? Like I wish maybe, I, I, I don't know how you would do it. Don't get me wrong. I don't, 
I wouldn't know how to like you write that into a script, but like, I wish there would have been a sense of dread or something about Natasha's death. You know what I mean? There thematically. I, we got it in the post credit scene. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, I was going to say the post credit scenes, I think, gave us that. But I don't I don't think they wanted us to dwell on that, like, You're right. looming death. Like, during the whole movie, like, oh, well, you know, we know she's going to die. Yeah. I think they wanted to end it on a hopeful note, mm-hmm. like, on something a little more positive. Like, okay, you know, I saved... I saved my my widow family. I saved my like Russian family, um, and now I'm gonna go save my Avengers family because I think she was feeling like really hopeless. Yeah, after no, the events she was. of Civil War, she was very devastated, very conflicted. Like, oh, we have this this tear in the family, the Avengers family. Like, how how are we ever gonna make this right? And then after going through the events of Black Widow, I think she got a renewed sense of hope. Yeah. And so she's like, you know, let's let's do it. I'm gonna go get cap, and we're gonna bust everybody out of the ark. <laughs> Which I love. But here's the thing: I was I was hoping to get like a Steve Rogers cameo at the end, or something like that, mm-hmm. just because it led up to that point. And it didn't mm-hmm. have to be something where it, like it takes away from the film or the narrative. But because this is Marvel, and because everything is a puzzle piece. I just thought like, oh, it's going to end with her like either getting on the walkie talkie and we'll hear Cap's voice or, you know, she'll meet up with Cap and that will be like the post credit scene or something like that. Yeah. I just, I think we needed, I, I would have liked that little like Ryan. bridge there because it yeah. ends with her in the exact outfit we would see in Infinity War. So like, why not just throw in Cap and uh, Falcon there and they, and they unite, you know, or want Yeah. Elizabeth Olsen, you know what I mean? Like, who's, there's no one hotter right now in the MCU than, like, yeah. Wanda. And in the comics, too. So, you know, like, that was the only thing that I was like, I wish they would have just respected the lore a little bit more and, and, and connected it there. Well, I think they were also maybe trying to keep the focus on her. Like, you know, yeah. she's a strong woman. And then if we had these, like, male, like, cameos in there at the end, it may have overshadowed her, yeah, her, and her intentions a little bit. And rightfully so. I I thought this movie was just so good. I walked out so happy with it. How would you rank it in the MCU list for you? Like, where, where does it fall on your ranking of MCU films? I mean, like, well, my husband said that it was definitely one of the best ones he'd ever seen. Like he walked away from that saying like, wow, like that was incredible. So I think I echo his um, sentiment and I feel like maybe it's in the top five for me. Really? That's really high up. Yeah. I think like overall, like the message was great. You know, we had like strong female performers in it. Um, There was, yeah, yeah. (laughs) there was like a strong, a sense of like family values like families of all kinds and you know we had some little humor in there too really good humor and the Uh, action like oh my god great action yeah yeah i i read somewhere uh, the other day where somebody was kind of like poo-pooing on the action saying like yeah there's like a lot of cutaway scenes and uh, it could have been filmed like maybe more continuously but i thought for the like the way the movie like the story was being told that it worked very well i i agree i, it. I don't i don't know what they, what they <laughs> I, I don't know who you you read that off of i've heard people talk about like there was too much cgi especially in that last scene i loved it i mean look the only thing that took me out of the movie were scarjo like falling like obscene like heights which like if she was a meta human and we can get into that actually, because there was a little line about genetics in there, but Mm -hmm. assuming that Natasha is just fully human, that car accident that happened. So she falls down like the building and then she gets in the car and then there's this huge car accident. I was like, uh, listen, if you were Captain Marvel, if you were Captain America, yeah, I get it. You're meta human. You're, you're invulnerable. You can walk away from that. But if it was her Hawkeye, Tony Stark, like without the armor, I'm like, 
you're not walking away from that without some serious injuries. That's the yeah. only thing from the movie that took me out. And the only thing I've seen when people poo poo on it or pew pew on it, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah, fine, fair. But like, I don't know. Like, it's, I, I want to say this in a very thoughtful way. Like, are we just hyper analyzing certain little things like that because this is, you know, a female led movie? Because there's some other movies that I've seen, I'm like, oh, that's not going to happen. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, all of a sudden now we're worried about CGI, like in the third act, like, no, it was fine. Black Widow is an acrobat. That is 100% believable. She would be falling through the air. She would jump on buildings. She would fight Taskmaster. Master. She's a poser. Come on. She's, She's a poser. And she looks good. So I don't like, <laughs> I don't necessarily agree with the criticisms. My only thing with the act three was from a writing perspective, like everything felt too convenient. And like, yes, after, you know, she was on the floor after talking to her mom, which was Rachel Rice, Rice Rachel Wise's character, um, uh, Melina, Melina. Um, I was like, okay, there's something happening. Like no one's going to get, no one is going to get the jump on Natasha in her own movie, especially since we're entering act three. Yeah. I, I felt though the way it was executed, the big reveals and stuff like that, like that she was, you know, masquerading as Melina in order to get mm -hmm. to, you know, the HQ and get all the data info. I thought it was a little all too convenient. I would have liked it to have been a little bit more messy in terms of like the plotting for it. But it just yeah. felt like, and the, the scene with the pheromones and all that stuff, like they needed a thematic, they needed a literary, I'm saying literary, but let's say movie storytelling tool for why black widow can't just come in and be like you're a fucking asshole punch grab yeah. the key like you need to build the tension i get that i just yeah. felt like it was a little too neatly organized if that makes mm -hmm. sense yes yeah but like the what first call it? Plot, plot device is that what it's called yeah I, I call it literary or... plot device when i'm talking about um books yeah but like yeah. the first two-thirds of the movie i was like this is a perfect movie like it's absolutely perfect for me. Like there was, I, I just, I loved Florence Pugh so much. I loved Yelena. Me too. too. Like she was just, she was so just like a perfect standout character. And I'm like so excited to see like what they do with her character. Um, I'm really, I, everyone's been saying that she's going to appear in the Hawkeye series, which after seeing the end credit, it, you know, makes, makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was a little confused about like her relationship with Natasha because I felt like they'd seen each other before mm -hmm. they went back to Budapest. Yeah. I, like, I yeah, like, like did they not talk? Like that's yeah. what kind of like that was that was a little open ended. So I just I feel like maybe in in Budapest there was something like Yelena and Natasha met up, and maybe Hawkeye was in there too, involved in there too, because you know post credit scene at the end when um, Yelena's told that Hawkeye killed Natasha. Oh, she seems by so Julia like, Louise Dreyfus herself, Valentina <laughs> Allegra de Fontaine was there. Yeah. Sorry, guys, that's like the big post credit scene connecting uh, it not only to Falcon. You're gonna have to put like huge spoiler warnings before you post this, like major spoilers, because major. I feel like all these all these little points that we're talking about are very important. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so spoilers. Spoilers, guys. Go, that's it. Go see the movie. Go, go see, see it. it. <laughs> yeah, but no, I agree. I so okay. Wait, so they they meet up in Budapest, and mm -hmm. the Yelena's like, "What? What? What? What, what kind of bullets does that on a wall?" And, and Natasha's yeah. like, "Those are arrows." So we know this mm -hmm. is the era with, or there, it's a heart, heart, well, callback to the era with you know Hawkeye during Budapest, and we find out what mm -hmm. that whole thing was. But even before that as well, even before a supposed uh, Budapest, wouldn't, I guess I'm trying, I'm piecing it together as we're talking about it, but like they would live in like the Black Widow dorms together, right? Well, like, I don't know, maybe, unless they were trained separately, like under two different programs. Yeah, but and, and she, like, I think she was cycling through, uh, Natasha cycled through a second time because she was already a child assassin at the beginning mm -hmm. of the movie. 
So maybe yeah. it's a different program. I like, yeah, thank you for piecing that yeah. for me. Yeah, and Yelena kind of like knew the layout of that safe house as well. So the fact that they both kind of knew it and they had their little like standoff in there, I feel like something else happened prior. Like they, they saw each other. Um, they knew about each other. I don't know if... I don't, uh, I don't know what Yelena would have been like brainwashed, wouldn't she? But you see, that's what I don't get. Why, um, why did ScarJo not get brainwashed, but Yelena did? I think, so, so Black Widow brought down the Black Widow program. You know, she blew up uh, Dekov and Antonia, mm -hmm. and then he survived. Somehow he survived. Even though, like, when she was here, like, there was no body left to burn. I was like, you didn't check, really? Like, yeah, you I always got to check for the body. That's yeah, like check for it. Like, I don't know, that seemed like an amateur <laughs> move for, like, a, for, for Black Widow, you yeah. know? But, yeah. fine, short. Um, but, so, sometime in the interim, he reformed the Black Widow program, but, like, the Black Widows who were in there, I guess, Yelena says, you never came back for me. Did the Black Widows just stay in limbo? And then he came back, and then the mind control stuff, I have to watch it a second time. Yeah. Imagine on Lock and Disney Plus, so I can, like, be hyper analytical because I saw this yeah. like three nights ago. Um, maybe maybe they met up prior to the the mind control Black Widow program, and maybe because of what Natasha did by trying to kill him, uh, he went back and he's like, "Look, we got to make this program like tighter. We got to put these girls on some kind of repercussions if they don't do their job. Oh, like, yeah, look, like protocols, like, and if, yeah, like, if they don't, like, even though they're because that one girl, that one widow that, um, you know, fell yeah. and she was she was hurt and she was dying and Natasha wanted to help her. She's like, you know, you can't. Like, she knew she was going to die because he hit a button that made her kill herself. Yeah. So I think even though they're not, they're not there, but they are, like, in the back of their heads, they're on this weird, like, assassin autopilot. Yeah. And, um, and that was so such they a know, like... Like that was a yeah. beautiful theme that like the, yeah. th these men can manipulate these women. They can change their DNA, like not DNA, but their, their thoughts, but they can never take, rob them of who they are. It yeah. Was so beautiful. Yeah. I really like, loved it. I, I just like, I love the messaging for this movie so much. I think it's just mm -hmm. a movie. I wish I would have had growing up, you know? And I'm just so happy that there's a whole generation of fans out there who are growing up with this kind of movie and this kind of messaging. And it's such an important message. And it was just so beautiful. And, oh, my God, Rachel Weiss looks so fucking... I really liked her character. I, I had heard rumors that she was going to be, like, a bad person, like a bad guy. And when I saw, like, the... The third act is you like to call it uh <laughs> and she you know i thought i'm like oh man she really is like mean and also the scene with the pig when like she wasn't letting the pig <gasps> breathe i'm like i'm all I this fish no like, dude, that was that was hurting my heart i'm like mm, she is evil because at first i was like oh she's nice she's you know she cares about the girls like she cares about her little her fake family and then when she did that to the pig i'm like mm, no she's gonna be evil she's gonna this is some kind of like alluding to some kind of betrayal yeah in the future and you know them plot twists like she's not really bad she was just pretending like she really does care um i think i think that was nice because i was not expecting her to be as compassionate a character as she was. Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it was beautiful. I love that all of them had these three years together and them coming together, they were just like picking up right where they left off. And yeah. it was so gorgeous. And yeah, she was a little sketchy at first, but then I, see, then I loved the flashback. Here's where I eat my words. I'm like, oh yeah, I was a little too convenient with the plot. But then when they flash back and you hear them talking mm -hmm. and I remember even thinking like, oh my God, they even show her room. She has all these costumes, including a red wig in the background. So like, they were so smart to put that there, but like the chemistry between them. And like, I think, um, you know, Melina was 
a mom figure in the end to them. And when she's here, like, Elena, wake up. I left a knife in your pocket. <laughs> it's like, mom packed my lunch. Thank you yeah. for including like a little chocolate bar, mom. Like, <laughs> I just thought they leaned into that aspect of family. And I thought it was really, really great. And I just loved it so much. But oh, the one thing I did want to mention before we go off track even more was, you know, they, they tell Natasha, you know, your real mom kind of gave you up, which we know uh, later on in the movie, her real mom tried to find her. But the reason why they came to her was because they were testing for genetics and Natasha matching genetics. Listen, I don't know if that makes her a mutant, but it does give us a reason why she was able to survive a car crash <laughs> that went all the way down to the subway platform. But yeah. um, I thought that was really interesting that they're introducing genetics. And I don't know, I, I want your thoughts on it. I, do you think it was just a throwaway line? Did you like a reason why she was selected? Do you think it's maybe a little bit more uh, of a little nod to something uh, bigger coming in the MCU? Well, I think... Like the extra. I think having them talk about her genetics also helps kind of perpetuate like the selection process and then maybe <clears throat> maybe her genetics not only allowed her to be a potentially efficient assassin but also easily mind controlled and manipulated or if that mind control like alters their body in any way as well Mm-hmm. Like maybe that's that's part of it. Oh, where, that's a really good point. Yeah, so maybe that's why she can survive like a very intense car crash is because like her her body like naturally can react or the Black Widow program can do something to yeah. her her DNA that allows her to take. I mean, she takes a beating like at the end, like that's, that's intense. And maybe her genetics allow her to do that, to take those beatings. Cause I mean, I mean, her face afterwards looked great. Yeah. So. I, when she fixed her nose, I was like, ScarJo, you don't, you look perfect. Like you didn't even <laughs> need to touch your nose before. Yeah. I mean, any, any regular person, you know, Hawkeye, Tony Stark, like you mentioned earlier, they would have intense swelling, yeah. bruising, like, and she just went and got her hair did and you know like <laughs> i think in here as you were talking and like i'm i'm just thinking like maybe the black widow program like that's the superpower there like it teaches mm-hmm. you how to put everything back flawlessly it teaches you how to survive a car accident and fall i mean again, i have to see the scene again with the black widows falling in the alley that i keep referring to the only reason why i'm bringing it up it's because she took a fall and like from a director standpoint you don't need to have ScarJo fall like that. You can just have her break her fall here and there and then land. And you'd be like, okay, yeah, I get why she survived it. But my memory of that fall and that car accident, I was like, that is brutal. You know what I mean? And then the other Black Widow died because yeah. of the fall. Why, why didn't ScarJo die? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, well, she, the other Black Widow died because she was, you know, suicide because of the yeah. mind control. But she, she was, was pretty messed up. She was pretty messed up, girl. You needed yeah. to call. How about this? You needed to call 911 for her. <laughs> and that's why, like, and, and and that was only my concern because I'm aware that there's certain characters that are just humans, like you and I, like Hawkeye and Natasha. I feel that's why they were standout stars in the Avengers, why they bonded so well. Because mm-hmm. we have that scene at Hawkeye's uh, family farm where his wife is like, look at these. You're standing next to gods and immortals. And, and what does that make you? And you know, or he's, pen, you know, being pensive about that. And, and it's because he was a heart. That was his strength. And I think to a certain degree, Natasha, you know, has that quality of selflessness that she brings to her role. And when I think of Black Widow in the MCU, I think of that scene in Endgame where she's looking at Steve and she goes, I had nothing before this gig. And like, this is why being an Avenger matters to her because she wasn't gifted with being a a space god. Is that what they call Thor in it? Space (laughs) god or, you know, being a super soldier. Like she was a very real person like you and I and being an Avenger means something so powerful and intimate to her that the others probably don't get. So that's it. That's the only reason why I was worried about our girl when I saw her fall. I was like, no, (laughs) no, no, no. Do you know what I absolutely loved and called when the movie was about halfway through? 
I called the taskmaster was going to be a widow. It was going to be either the, the, I called her the little girl who died or uh, Melina. Because like, it makes sense. This guy is emotionally, physically, and mentally manipulating women. The, the, the star of the, the Black Widow program was going to be Taskmaster, and it was going to have to be a girl underneath it. And mm-hmm. I love the gender bending with Taskmaster. Yeah. That being said, I'm not a fan of Taskmaster. I've seen a lot of people throw hate on it. I'm like, oh, really? Like, but I, I was okay with it. I loved it. I think it humanized Taskmaster. That mm-hmm. scene where Natasha's like crawling to her, and you, she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry what I did to you, everything. And like Antonia's response was, is he dead? And in that moment, you're like, oh my God, the things he did to his own daughter. Like, oh, that breaks my heart. But now that she's going to go off and be with the other widows and she's a fucking taskmaster. I just loved it. I loved it so much. Well, I don't know if she's going to stay Taskmaster. So mm. I I think it's like a misdirection a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, because everyone was so angry that Taskmaster's a, a woman. Um, but everyone referred to, they didn't refer to her as Taskmaster. They always referred to her as like the Taskmaster protocol. Yep. Like they were like, send out Taskmaster. They're like, activate or yeah, activate Taskmaster protocol. So I think Taskmaster is the actual program, like the chip that's in her her neck that allows a person, so potentially anybody else, to mimic and become the Taskmaster, basically. Like, I love that theory 100%. Yeah. I think you just nailed it. Like. <laughs> Yes, I have nothing to say. That I'm just like yes, queen. <laughs> yes, queen. Play with your fan theories. I have a lot of theories. They don't always end up being true, but I think but that that's sense. Sense what they were trying to do, like misdirect it. Like, okay, we're going to introduce Taskmaster, and it's not going to be what people think or expect, and then it's going to come back somehow. Probably like there's a thunderbolts happening. I believe. So. Yeah, I think it's. So, it hasn't been officially announced. It may have been. And I definitely wait. No, it hasn't been officially announced, but it's being alluded to. Quite yeah. A bit. So I, f- I feel like they're gonna get a hold of that Taskmaster protocol and give it to somebody else. Well, and we've uh, seen there's so many legacy characters. I mean, the the MCU now is all about legacy. We have a new Black Widow in the form mm-hmm. of Florence Pugh, who is. Flawless. We have Anthony Mackie, who is now Captain America. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have Iron Heart, who will presumably take on the mantle of, you know, the Iron Man. Or, or mm-hmm. maybe it could be Peter Parker or whatever. And we have Wanda, who's now more powerful, more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I love that theory. And we also saw that the this, this guy, Dacoff, made a whole, like, organization of Black Widows. It would make sense that he would do more than just one Taskmaster. And yeah. we did see him with male guards entering the helicopter. So maybe they, that is more of, you know, a different set of, um, God, I'm totally forgetting, like an entirely different program from the Black Widow. And it's not mm-hmm. focused on gender. It's just, we're just abducting humans. But yeah, I love yeah. this movie so much. Like this movie yeah, for me was flawless. Yeah, it was so good. And, yeah, and like the only things that I have to say about it are just because I have an MFA in writing that I have not put <laughs> into good use for a couple of years. And so I just, I hyperanalyze the, the writing way too much. But I thought, again, like I said, the first two thirds of the movie, I thought was a flawless movie. And I was just so happy with it. Yeah, I thought it was uh, very like visually stunning. Everything was just like, there were... I don't know if it was mimicking the costumes at all, but there were, when they were breaking Red Guardian out, you know, they were wearing their whites Mm -hmm. and everything was in the snow and it was just all, it's all very white, you know? And then when they got to like the red room, there were all, there's all this blackness and then just pops of red, which I like, it's just really visually stunning. It was a visually stunning I feel when Marvel gets their styling right, like with Black Panther, it's like 
the colors just pop off the screen. Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther, and Black Widow are the three movies I think I love the style the best. The only thing I'm going to say about like the snow and the white costume, like so she's wearing the white costume because she's going to blend in with the snow. It makes sense for Florence Pugh to have her hair down because she's blonde and so she'll just like blend in. But ScarJo has like bright red hair and like she's just letting it wait like flow around i'm like girl just put it in a bun or a braid you guys like braids <laughs> just put it in a braid because like no matter how incognito you're gonna be your your, your hair is gonna pop that was my only note for it but oh my god does she look incredible she looks great i don't think she was expecting to have to like get out of the chopper though. that's true oh so my god like, but you know she... i'm gonna i'm gonna let my hair down oh my god but when she yeah. did yeah, it was oh great. Oh my god. Um the post credit scene, obviously, with Yelena going to Natasha's grave and Julia Louise Dreyfus's Val showing up. I think, you know, it could be a hint at the Thunderbolts, as you just said, maybe like a Dark Fenders team. I don't know what she's assembling. We know US Agent is part of it, but we do know she's gonna be going to Hawkeye somehow some way shape or form it's tying into the hawkeye series and i think we'll see do you have any theories on what we could possibly see out of that um, well she's definitely gonna go after clint that's for sure <laughs> uh i don't actually justin had a good one um my husband oh. he i think he said that maybe she will kill clint or injure him in some way where he has to retire. And then that will be like Kate Bishop's yeah. way of stepping into the mantle. I, of Hawkeye. I love that theory. I think that's absolutely great. And I think Jeremy Renner would work more as a um, like mentor figure. And actually he had a scandal a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> that's pretty big. Mm. And I wonder if Disney's sidelining him for that, but um, yeah. that's an entirely different episode. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, I love you so much. Mm. Thank you for being on tonight. Of course. Of course. What exciting projects or appearances do you have coming up that you want to plug? Um, I mean, I wish I had appearances. Uh, what, what next red carpet are you going to? Oh, well, hopefully, maybe, like, maybe I get an invite to Eternals or uh, Shang-Chi. That would be, that'd be great. Justin was like, do you think, you think you'll get invited to Shang-Chi? I, I, I would love to see you there. I don't want to see you at Eternals. Boo on Eternals. I always get in trouble for saying boo on Eternals. <laughs> Listen, the Eternals just seem to me that uh, Disney was trying to make the Inhumans happen. It exploded in their face. The Disney Fox deal hadn't happened yet, so they had to get the Eternals going because they need that kind of like x men superhero team. And now we're finally getting the X-Men. So for me, I'm just like, get Eternals out of the way so we can get the mutants in. But oh. uh, I'm well, being I, I kind of liked Inhumans. Like, <gasps> I know a eject, lot of people didn't. Eject, eject. How do I mean? Okay, <laughs> but I really love Lockjaw. All right. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah. Like, oh like my Crystal God, yeah. and Lockjaw. Oh, I like... I like um, I like the actress that played Medusa. I am oh, spacing on her name. Oh, I don't know gosh. her name. I know who you're talking about. I didn't also like the actor who played uh, Black Bolt as well. Yeah, I think... I think not, it's actress, not casting. Not a casting yeah, No, it was great. I think the story had issues. Yeah. It was um, just weird positioning. And I know Kevin yeah. Feige, you know, but it heads with Jeff Loeb quite a bit. So yeah, but, he was ahead of I Marvel mean, I TV. still... I still liked it. It's okay. I like, Listen. I like the inhuman. Really? <laughs> Let me, I think we should do our next episode should be inhumans versus X-Men. Okay. We can read that and you can All be, right. you can, you can, you can be on the side of the inhumans, not on the side of, but you can make a case yeah. for the inhumans. How about that? I'll argue, I'll argue the inhuman side. That's fine. Yeah. I'm actually, I would love to do a, crystal cosplay and then like edit my dog slurpy derby as look lockjaw like your dogs you know, are so cute by the way thank you you guys can follow them on instagram uh roxy slurpy derby I didn't know they were on Instagram. I'm going to, excuse me right now while, while we're talking because i'm going to follow them almost immediately um 
they were so adorable when I met them. I just loved your house. I loved your vibe and everything. I love how I'm giving you like compliments while I'm on your Instagram. <laughs> Look Can you at- just like all the photos and like? Right. You know. Where are you? Where, where? There we go. I try um, to post even amounts of pictures. I'm not in that many because I'm always taking them. But Justin is in a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm not. He's all over that Instagram. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's a few pictures in there that are kind of juicy. I think Justin doesn't have his shirt on. Oh my god, Justin! <laughs> oh my god. Oh, by the way, I'm your 300th person. Yeah. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to do a shout out. Be like, thanks for being our 300th follower. You can just, like, it could be Justin shirtless. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my husband's looking at me. I can see him. I have the door open. He's here, like, stop hitting <laughs> on another person <laughs> while I'm in the room. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, womp womp. I'm liking all your photos. Um, Michelle, where can folks at home connect with you? Uh, well, I'm on Instagram at Michelle Waffle O. Mm-hmm. It's spelled kind of funky, but if you just like search Instagram Michelle Waffle, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one. Yeah. Your Instagram uh, is a beacon. I love it so much. You have so much light. Thank you. Thank you. I also do Cosplay Alliance stuff. So there's another Instagram account, Cosplay Alliance. I'm not the admin for it, but I do interviews for the YouTube channel there. So I interview cosplayers, um, photographers, uh, content creators on there. you did one with Amanda Martini recently. I did. Oh, my gosh. It was, like, the easiest interview I've ever done because she just, like, she comes on and she's already, like, I have to hit record instantly because we're just gonna go yeah like it was she's a spreadsheet queen and i love that about her she is always prepared and she is wonderful but your interview with her just brought me so much joy and i went to a couple of your cosplay alliance panels a couple months ago and you're just a natural moderator and you are so good at it and that was incredibly last minute yeah it was I think it was the morning of like they're like we need we need a moderator for some of this stuff. I had no idea who the guests were, like what I was moderating. It just it just happened to work out. Like, well, because you're naturally <laughs> talented and you did it you. So flawlessly. And I can't wait to see more of your stuff on cosplay lines. Yeah, yeah. Tune in cosplay alliance on YouTube and Instagram. We all, they also put out a magazine occasionally featuring uh, cosplayers as well. I've been in it twice. Yes! Yeah! Look, I can gush about you all day. I'm sorry. Aww. I just love you. I'm your salty, older, gay brother, Christian Frost. So. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, thank you again. Oh, of course. Of course. Anytime. Happy to do it. All right, folks. So we are serving double waffles this week. So tune in in a few days for me and Michelle discussing Generation X with special guest star Larry Houston. It was the X Men animated series director. Yes, Larry. Yes. All right, guys. As always, I'm the Uncanny Day Spring signing off. Bye.